Welcome to a green overcast day in Imperium Galactic Survival and what can I say guys this is going to be the last part in this series simply because on the 5th of December 2018 if you're watching this in the future the Alpha 9 update was released into the experimental branch and I would like to give a big thank you to T Online for posting a comment pointing out that Alpha 9 had actually been released uh, I completely missed that and a big thank you to that for that comment. How am I going to wind this series up? Well, I'm going to do this video in two parts. The first part, I'm just going to give you guys a quick update on the base. Then the second part, the changes to Alpha 9 are going to change the way we're going to be playing the game in the future. And some of them are going to be quite controversial. So I thought rather than just reading the patch notes on, on a dull video or trying to demonstrate things, I thought I'd use this last part as an opportunity to go through the changes with the Alpha 9 update but talk about them in relation to the current 8.7 release and I'm going to put some of my own speculations and opinions in but I think it will make sense guys anyway let's get down to it for any of you guys following the series a quick update you can see here what I've been doing off camera is I've put these railings in to try and put a bit of an aesthetic to the base I think it's looking quite good I'm, I'm quite happy with this and you can see the plants are growing quite happily without the use of an oxygen supply so I think we've cracked that and the other thing I want to show you is that because it's a little bit cloudy you can see where the the, the efficiency and power consumption is down and if I come in here and show you here you can see that through the night my batteries were completely drained out that's partly because we had a storm during the night and that goes to show that despite putting all these solar panels out they're not producing enough energy to provide a surplus for to get me through the night so if I was going to carry on developing this base I would need to put some extra power supplies out either that or consider maybe switching a few items off so I think that's enough of the overview so let's get down to what are the changes in Alpha 9 now I'm going to go through these in a slightly different order from the patch notes if now if any of you guys want to read the absolute details of the patch notes I will put a link in the video description ignore the comments coming up at the bottom that that's coming up because the game is a bit upset because I went in I've already loaded the Alpha 9 update played around a little bit and then I reverted the game back to the 8.7 update in order to make this video and I think the game's got a bit confused it thinks I'm a this this is a new start because obviously I reloaded the 8.7 update anyway let's just get into it guys I'm just going to drop down here now the first change I want to talk about is the change to weapons now if this relates to maybe handguns and rifles now the normal zoom options will remain the same but what they've done is they've introduced iron sights I think there's a mention of red dot sights that means that when you shoot at the moment I shoot now you can see the pistol stays down there if I change to a a rifle so effectively in this position it gives the impression that I'm shooting from the hip with the Alpha 9 update what will happen is when I shoot the rifle will come up and we will be looking down the sights and I think that's going to be quite an interesting concept to get used to simply because you like this you're going to have a restricted visibility because you will have the gun in front of you and the other change they've made which is going to be a little bit more fun is the fact that at the moment if I shoot this you can see I, I can maintain a target lock on that rock I know I'm shooting the heck out of the rock but what they've now introduced is recoil and what will happen with recoil is as you shoot your weapon will rise and that means that th these long blasts that we've got very familiar with especially when we're getting a bit hot and heavy inside of a hostile POI we're going to have to learn to correct our shots and my immediate thoughts on that is it's going to be fun using a minigun and a rocket launcher because I mean I wonder whether they're going to change the extent of the recoil according to weapons and this may also apply to shotguns and then another thought occurred to me that a weapon that I don't use very much any of you guys follow my series you, you see I very rarely use a laser rifle and it suddenly occurred to me that a laser rifle should not incur any recoil so this change will encourage players to explore laser rifles now and I think that is quite an interesting concept a small change but I think it's going to have quite a big impact on 
the way we're going to play the game. Now the next one is I'm not sure about to be honest it's something that I, I'm, maybe once I get in and we play the mechanics it might make sense and this change is the fact that NPCs and POIs will now have a level which means and I'm assuming that that level will be level 1 up to some figure I think it's level 10 don't quote me on that guys I, I've got no absolute detail confirmation on that and this the level that your first encounters will relate to the game difficulty so if you want to play on medium or hard that means when you start a playthrough your first POIs you will encounter will be a higher level than if you play on simple. Now the level of the NPC will re relate to their ability, the amount of damage they can do and their health bar. So if you encounter a level 6 say Talon they're going to be a lot tougher to put down than say a level 1 and to me that's a very interesting concept and then with the leveled up POIs is that if you attack say a level 10 POI the NPCs within that may have a range of higher levels underneath so so some of the POIs will be quite tough nuts to crack and I'll be very interesting to see how this mechanics going to work now the other thing that struck me is that maybe there's a dynamic here that where the devs are thinking that I, I don't know if that in you guys but one thing I do tend to find slightly annoying is that once you get to the mid game you, you've got all the, the, the fancy weapons and nobody can stand against you you go to another planet yes you deal with the environment and maybe there's a few more higher level units but you, what you don't encounter is tougher opponents and I just wonder whether there's going to be scope within the game to say like when you leave the start planet and go and visit another planet all the POIs on that planet will be level 10 and they'll be really tough and that's an element that does interest me but at the same time my main concern is how what the, the starting new game experience will be. Right guys, and I think that's all I'm going to say about levelling up. And what I'm going to do now is move on to another interesting concept that's related to NPCs. And I'm just going to read the, the actual description from the patch notes. It says, AI, AI factions, reputation and territory. And I think this is an attempt by the devs to introduce some deeper lore into the game because I, th I think that currently, like, if you go out and if we attack a POI or if I'm wandering across the planet now, of course, there won't be any around here, and you meet a Talon, which is a villager. I mean, if any of you guys watched two videos ago, I attacked two villages. Those were Talon villages. But at the moment with the Alpha 8.7 release these seem to be detached communities and what the, the, the idea seems to be is to pull these into global factions or universal factions I suppose if they go across planets and it's also been stated within the patch notes that this is the beginning so there's a hint of other factions appearing and I'm just going to read through the, the, the four factions that are going to be introduced we're going to have the good old Xerox Empire who are currently the bad guys these are the guys that shoot you out the sky whenever you get near anything and you're minding your own business and suddenly rockets come up from the ground then there's the natives i.e the talon and then there's what they call is the polaris now i'm assuming that what they mean by that these are the friendly pois these are the pois that you visit and loot quite happily i think that's just about to change then more interesting they've got another faction which they say you can't to have a reputation with called aliens so it looks almost like they're introducing a random fact hostile factor so the, the aliens are going to be the replacement for the current Xerax model they, they were always going to be hostile and and the thought that struck me is they could relate to space-based encounters rather than planetary based encounter so how's this new system's going to work now the way it seems to be working is that on the map what will happen is when you expose the map the races will claim areas and these will be colored so the Talon villages will have an area the Xerox will obviously will claim large areas around their hostile POIs and I'm assuming that where the admin building is that will be claimed by the the Polaris what will happen is if you see it underneath the radar scope on the right you you will get the name of the factions area you have encountered appear there that all seems quite straightforward now what I want to do now is move on to reputation and what they're implying is that 
your interactions with these factions will have benefits and consequences and the idea is that you can build a reputation so it's possible it will be possible to make friends with the Xerax but at the same time if you go into a Talon area and start mining they're going to get upset with you and turn hostile and I think what they've doing have done is extended this area so at the moment you've got humans neutral and I think there will be a tab in here that's going to be factions so there will be an opportunity to build relations with factions you can either become hostile or become friendly but the next bit is is being sneaked in behind and that is rivalry so the talons won't like the xerax so it won't be possible to be friends with everybody and that introduces an, in, an interesting dynamic that could be fun to play with and and as the devs say this is just the beginning of where they want to take this so i think in future updates this is going to be developed even further now my thoughts on this is going to be quite interesting because say for example let's go back to the map you've landed on a new planet now and you're struggling to survive and you've got a talon village there and they've got a nice iron mine in the middle there and you go and quite happily mine it you're going to upset the talon which you've got to do in order to survive when you're starting a campaign but they're, they're going to turn hostile and take dislike you and then you're going to be fighting off villagers where up until now with the 8.7 update unless you actually start shooting them up they, they just ignore you and quite often even when you shoot them up they, they forget very quickly that you were five minutes before blasting them all to, to, into destruction and the other thought that's occurred to me is a technique which I think we've all used in the past where you head straight for the nearest friendly POI quite happily loot it for everything it's got and hold it all back to your base now the thought that's occurred to me is that if you're going to start looting these friendly POIs, are they going to get upset about it and turn hostile? So looting may actually have a consequence in the future. And I'm quite intrigued by how that's actually going to work. And that is something I certainly want to explore when, when I get a formal Let's Play going. And on that concept, guys, I don't, I'm not going to jump straight into a full-length Let's Play with the with the current update because it is the first release the devs already said that there's bugs and i've also played it a, a little bit and i have encountered a couple of bugs so i think between now and the new year i'm just going to probably do some short let's plays just experiment with things look at some of the features and and go into them in a bit more depth right guys what i want to do now is move on to the the final major change in alpha 9 and it probably is the biggest change and that is logistics now this is going to be a very controversial change and is what we in the UK often refer to as a Marmite change. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. For any of you guys who live in Australia, it's Marmite's the equivalent of Vegemite. And I've already seen some reactions in some of the forums, people saying, I absolutely hate this, this is going to destroy the game. And there's people saying, I'm going to love it. My personal opinion is I like the concept, but I'm a little bit nervous about how it's going to be implemented and there's going to have to be certain implications which I hope the devs are going to get right and for that reason I think even the devs accepted that this is going to be a big change because it's going to affect the way we manage our storage and our relationship between the base and the ships and also looting bases I'll come back to that later on what they've actually done is that the current release that's inside of the experimental branch has the new conditions which are weight and volume but it's not enabled and I think the idea is is to give the community a chance to get in learn the new mechanics that will support this new model before we actually have to learn to live with it but if you're really adventurous if you really want to get it down and dirty very quickly there is a way described in the release notes that allow you to go in and change one of the files to switch it on and make it true so if you really want to get into it straight away feel free to jump into it now probably the best way to explain it is that if I come into the inventory screen what you will see down the bottom here is two figures and um, one will be for volume and one will be for, will be for weight so it means that everything will have a volume and a weight and once you fill up either the volume or the weight you will not be able to add anything to your inventory so that means the days of stuffing every slot with every conceivable resource 
will be over because if you pick up heavy items and one of the items that strike me straight away is like here I've got a lot of ammunition here I've got sniper rounds and whether ammunition is going to have weight it also means that there's going to be certain items in the game which you will not be able to pick up so that nice advanced constructor you found it won't fit in your inventory because either the weight or the volume will be too big and that also has implications for when you're building ships because obviously again I mean I've done this quite regularly I mean I've come back here just to show if any guys and don't know what I'm really talking about if I come up to here and where is it building supplies I think we've all done it oh I don't really have a block here but you, you do this I mean you just drop everything in here ready to start a big building session I mean we've all done it but you won't be able to do this because these are all quite big structures. Man, shut up. My guys, I just paused so that I didn't want to compete with the base defences. And the way they get round it is the fact that you will have what they call a logistics screen. And what the logistics screen will be is two windows. And if any of you guys played No Man's Sky, it's a variation of the inventory system in No Man's Sky where you will be able to link two objects. So like, say on this side you would have a storage area I have to call it a storage area for a very specific reason and say on this side you will have your ship inventory what you will be able to do is select what one you want and then transfer large objects from say the one inventory to the other without passing through your suit inventory now to me I really like that idea even if I played with the volume and weight switched off because one of the annoying things I think we've all done it is like I'm in the base here if I want to say for example go over here and I want to transfer say stuff from my capital vessel to the base what I've got to do is come over here load everything up to my suit inventory and then come back over here and drop it into the base what they're saying is and they've got this concept called Wi-Fi so there's going to be a range any of you guys play No Man's Sky you'll be familiar with the fact that ships and items have ranges exocraft and you can't put things in what you'll be able to do is stand here open the logistics screen and then have the base on this side the capital vessel on this side and you'll be able to move items directly from the capital vessel to the base now my main concern with this is going to be distance because I think they said a hundred meters which isn't particularly that great but I think they've also got Wi-Fi repeaters now that now spins back to if you want to build a ship because what it's implying is that you're gonna to have to build a something that's attached to your base for building your ships on I know you technically you have to do it with a capital vessel anyway and then what will happen is that when you're actually building and I think they call it a hot bar hot hot bar here what you will have is the base inventory up here and you will dynamically link so what you will do is be able to say like put this down to here say I was building a base so this would be on the hot bar but it won't be in my inventory it will be in the storage area so when you're building a base or building a capital vessel you'll be able to build in the normal way it's just that you'll be managing things in a different dynamic now the main question I've got and it's something that I'm hoping that they will be able to deal with is the situation like say I go out now and attack a hostile POI I've got my ship there I've taken down the outer defenses I've got in I'm attacking and I get down to a loot box I'm assuming there will be loot boxes or the new equivalent of them and in that loot box is say an advanced constructor now I can't take that out like I would now and put it into my inventory but if there's a range to the ship and say if I'm doing something if any of you guys have played the game you'll be aware of like the abandoned factory goes very deep how would you get that advanced constructor from that loot box or wherever it is up into the ship now the only way I can think of this is that you're either gonna have to fight your way down through the base take out the core get control place the core and then you'll be able to access all the loot boxes and everything through the Wi-Fi connection and transfer it directly to the ship so you won't be able to loot very much whilst you're actually going down through through the ship and to me that's going to put a totally different dynamic onto the way you capture buildings and of course it does bring into the concept of 
what will be the role of special loot boxes and boxes that you currently not, cannot see in a base and the other option I was thinking is maybe that the ships will be able to have technology enhancements maybe you'll be able to put something on like the equivalent of a radar scanner that will in, enhance the distance that you you can you can transfer items say improve the wi-fi you know maybe put a wi-fi repeater down maybe you can take it with you and drop one say in a corridor anyway these are just my opinion guys i'm not claiming that i've got any insight or any contact with the devs that's just me putting it out there for a bit of dis discussion now the next thing i want to talk about is the changes to the constructor because this is going to be quite an interesting concept and it does feed into what i'm going to talk about in the end which is going to be the new storage system so what happens if we come into the advanced constructor you see at the moment the constructor has inventory input output what the new constructor layout will have is you'll still have the templates but the input and output area will be dynamic these will be storage areas external to the constructor so what you'll be able to do is put everything into a specific storage area or one storage area and what happens is the constructor will draw from that one and you can also tell the constructor to drop what it produces out of here so what to me this is going to be quite interesting because one it will allow you to control the weight and volume requirements it also means you'll be able to have say a storage area of all your raw materials in it and an output area of production area and it means that when you go to the logistics screen you will be able to access that directly and transfer it would be quite useful in building now the, the one thought that has occurred to me is what about food processors if i can find the food processor there's the food processor because at the moment the food processors store and refrigerate food so there's either going to have to be an attribute of storage that is equivalent to a fridge or are fridges and food processors going to stay the way they are and then does that mean that if you you're going to have like currently like now we have a row of fridges stored up i mean to me as long as there's reasonable capacity I'm, I'm not too worried either way to be honest i think it's an area where the devs may need to look at and i think it's an area where whilst alpha 9 is being developed and it goes into beta we may see some changes in that area and i think i've now got to a point where i'm now going to talk about the last change which is still related to logistics which is the actual storage capacity let's turn the light on now currently in bases we have great big piles of storage containers and if i go back into here you have the cargo boxes all lined up here got here cargo boxes weapons you know all the cargo boxes all lined up here and let's see i've got 14 cargo boxes well with the alpha 9 that changes what you'll have is storage areas you can add to so what you will do is build these storage areas and the way the release note says is each storage area has one control unit and I'm assuming that say in a base like this you will be able to create the dedicated storage areas or different things like returning to the constructor where you can have an input area and output area and it's going to be interesting to see how that actually works especially in the context of ships because ships are quite small and I just wonder how the storage capacity in the ship will work and especially with CVs but I think that's all going to be something we're going to need to explore right guys I think I've gone on long enough I've covered all the main points there's obviously there's other changes associated with this update but I will get into those in future videos I will come back and talk about the concepts that I've already discussed in detail I will give you some overviews of it and um, obviously as the changes come in because there's bound to be changes as the update moves through the experimental branch into beta and then finally into alpha i probably won't start a full-blown let's play until the update is in beta so probably over the christmas period now it's going to be a series of focused or targeted videos on specific updates of the changes especially if a new update comes out and just to wind this video up guys i'm just going to give my impressions of it i like the update i like the changes uh, feel free to disagree i mean this is going to be very much a personal relative impact on the way you play i i really like the deep deepening of the law but i do have some reservations like i've already expressed about how we're going to interact with put um 
points of interest when we're raiding them and looting them. I'm going to be interested to see how that mechanic is going to work. There's also the aspect with the fridges. And finally, the start is going to be interesting, having a very restricted inventory. I mean, does that mean because we won't be able to run around grabbing everything because we're going to fill up stuff there. In fact, I'll go as far as saying that the beginning war could be quite challenging now especially if you could we're going to be operating in territories belonging to say well the one that strikes to mind is we're going to wander into a talon engine an area to mine or gather um, plants because i think if you gather plants in a talon area they're going to get hostile towards you and i think i've gone on way too long guys so this is where i'm going to leave it hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting feel free to put a comment in agree disagree put your opinion in your observation i'm not claiming to be an expert on this and so until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming